We've looked at the relationship between categorical variables, so now let's look at relationship between quantitative variables. And the idea is um, we're interested in is there a connection? As you change the numerical value of the explanatory variable, is there some sort of predictable response um, in the response variable? Uh, for example, here's some data um, of house prices uh, versus square footage. And the, the way we usually visually represent this sort of data is with what's called a scatter plot. And so what that allows you to do is see that sort of XY relationship. So we, we'll typically put the, um, the explanatory over here. So in this case, we're seeing if is square footage a predictor of the house price. And so then on this axis, we have the response. And that's pretty typical x-axis explanatory response y. Because in algebra, we typically think of the x-axis as the independent variable and then y depending on it. Okay, so when you look at that scatter plot, that's the very first thing we do is just see does there appear to be some sort of connection. And um, when you look at that data, it is sort of trending upward, right? As we, as we get to larger and larger square footage, we seem to be going up and up in this house price. It's, it's not um, perfect by any means. Those are not lining up perfectly, but there seems to be a trend there. Um, you visually, you can kind of see a trend, and, that, and that's the thing that we're going to try and put some numbers to um, in our analysis of the data. So um, how well does, does this variable predict this one? And one way of thinking about how well it does is the better it does, the, the better this data is going to match some sort of curve um, if it's a very good predictor. Now, um, we could try and match all kinds of curves. This data might be shaped like a parabola. This data might be a sine wave. This data could be an exponential function. So there's lots of models we could look for. For us, um, just as an intro to this sort of idea, we are only going to be looking for a linear relationship. In other words, is this stuff, is this data fitting nicely to a line? Um, so it's not the only type. I just want to remind you of that. I'll try and keep reminding you um, that there's other models. So if stuff is not fitting a line well, that doesn't mean the variables aren't connected. Maybe they're connected by a logarithm function or a cubic function. So um, if, if your data fails to be linear, it doesn't mean it's not associated somehow. Um, OK, so the things we're going to be looking for is um, you know, the direction of that relationship. So we call this a, a positive association. Um, the simplest way to think of it is the line that would fit that has a positive slope. It's going up. Positive means they move together in the same way. More square footage means more cost in the house. So in terms of our relationship, we're interested in direction. So positive. Um, or negative. This one is heading up as we read from left to right. So that one appears to be showing some positive relationship. Um, as I mentioned a second ago, the form of the relationship, that's what I mean by what type of model it would fit. Could be linear, you know, could be exponential, all kinds of forms that could take on but like I said we're gonna we're gonna focus on a linear relationship we'll be looking at stuff that and testing whether or not there's a linear relationship and then where the stats is gonna come in is is we need some way of measuring the strength of that relationship um, 
there seems to be somewhat of a relationship here. There's a trend for increase in house price as you increase square footage. Um, but we got to put a number to that. How, how do we measure how well that data fits? Um, how well does that data fit some line? That's where we're sort of headed with that. And the measure we're going to use is what's called a correlation coefficient. Um, where it's typical for us to use the letter R. And don't worry right now about how this is computed. Uh, let's just focus on what that R value tells us. So this R is, is going to be a measure of how well these dots fit to a line. Um, and that's re related to what we're going to talk about later, which is what is that line, right? What would be the line that best fits that data? And then R is some measure of the deviation of that from the line. How is our de data deviating from the line? So this R captures not only the strength, but also the direction. So if it was perfect, if these dots were just perfectly on a line so that when I drew a line, it just passed through every dot, it would have an R of 1. The 1 is telling it's, it's a perfect relationship doesn't deviate from linear at all. And the fact that it's a positive one tells us that it's, it's a positive relationship. The slope is positive. If this data was a negative relationship and perfect, so that when I drew a line, every dot was right on the line, then we would have a R of negative 1. As you deviate from perfectly linear, you move in from negative 1 or 1 towards 0, where 0 would be if this was just a cloud of dots with no discernible pattern at all, our R would tend to be close to zero, meaning there's really no, rela no linear relationship anyways between the two. So R1 is going to be, R equal 1 is perfectly linear, perfectly linear. And the association is positive. Um, And then an R of negative 1 is perfectly linear with a negative. Another thing we will look at when we're looking at scatter plots is the idea of influential values or outliers. Um, you know, since we are trying to fit a line to this data, just one dot that is extremely, you know, say we had a data value right there. That kind of breaks the trend, right? And as we try and find a line that best fits the data, that line wants to, to minimize the error in these dots. And so that one dot, because it's so far away from everything else, is going to have a tendency to pull our, our model away from it. Uh, and that may sort of destroy any linear relationship that we thought we were seeing. So we have to think about how we want to handle these influential values. Is this something we want to include in our analysis? Um, because without it, we might have a really good model that fits those dots and just ignores that one. If we try and include that extreme dot in there, then it poorly matches all these other ones. So it's sort of a, um, you know, for the benefit of, the, of every, every other data point, should we ignore that influential outlier there? And that's a decision that has to be made uh, as a statistician. So let's, um, I want to show you how you can look at a stat plot on the applet. And I'll look at an, ex ex we'll look at examples of, of, well, we'll look at this one again. I'll show you how to get this house data into a scatter plot. 
And then we'll look at something that's got more of a negative association or correlation. Uh, so let's move on over to the applet. So notice you have this option correlation slash regression. Regression refers to the idea of finding that actual equation of the line that fits the data. Um, right now, we're not worried about that. We're just worried about uh, getting the scatter plot and finding that R value. So I'm going to clear that data. Here's the house price data. I'm going to copy that, paste it in here, use data. And so there's the scatter plot we were looking at. And um, so this is a quick way to get a scatter plot. There's lots of tools online that'll give you nicer, um, colorful versions of this and maybe more readable text. But uh, just to get the shape, you can kind of see that that's looking um, fairly linear and positive. Let's look right here. We can look at the correlation coefficient. And we're getting a 0.78 which is pretty large, right? That's much, much closer to one than it is to zero. So that's showing us that there, the relationship is positive and it's closer to being linear perfectly than not. Um, now, is that significant? Is, is 0.78 a, a significant value? Well, that's something we're gonna have to determine later on with some hypothesis testing, but um, but we're seeing the connection between the visual and the number there. This seems to be pretty well lined up on a line. And we're thinking of, you know, loosely you could think of that number as telling us that that data is 78% linear positive. Um, let's look at a set of data that has a negative So what this is, is it's, it's showing year here and then the percent of the U.S. population that lived in a rural area. And so let's clear this data and uh, paste in. And so we see this declining percentage of rural population over time and very, very closely linear. And if you see here, remember, you can click on this box, get your correlation. And that's representing what we're seeing visually. It's, it's negative for sure, right? As the year goes up, the percentage of rural residents goes down. And it's very tightly along a line. You know, one thing you can do on this app is you can try and lay a line on top of that visually. So there's a box here to click on a movable line. And you can grab these endpoints and then move this around a little bit. I want this to be a little lower. But you can see once you lay a line on top of it, how nicely that data is fitting to a line. Now, we haven't gotten into how we're going to find the best line to fit that, but um, it seems to be very linear. And again, you could. Think of that number loosely as telling us that it's 98% linear, and the negative is just telling that it's a negative slope or a negative association between those two variables. So your first step in analyzing this data is to make the scatter plot. From there, we could calculate the correlation coefficient. And then next, we want to look at how do you test that coefficient? How do you determine? whether that's significant or not. Data could be somewhat linear just randomly, and we want to see how likely that is.